Am I now unmuted? Yeah. You are unmuted, uh, Zile, you are. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, let me welcome everyone to uh, the Africa Day uh, commemoration hosted by the University of the Free State uh, Library Services. Today we'll be in talk with uh, Marcia. Uh, she is a, an author who has uh, written and published a book on black text. Uh, and I think given that it's Africa Day today, uh, the topic uh, is more befitting. And I think all of us will enjoy engagements with the author. Uh, let me start first before I give over to Marcia. Let me introduce uh, our panelists. The first uh, panelist I would like to introduce, uh, or oh, I don't know, should I just give to each one of you to introduce yourself briefly so that we can, or oh, can I do it for you? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, the first one I would like to introduce is Meneo uh, Mguevu. Uh, uh, she was born and bred in Pumalanga in Middleburg. Uh, she is currently doing her final year in uh, uh, anthropology and political sciences. Uh, I will just read briefly all the profiles without wasting time. The second panelist we have is Mary Filwe Masondo. Uh, she is a qualified librarian. Uh, who is passionate about development. Uh, she, is, she is currently, uh, or she has been in management of the Free State Libraries for over 10 years. And the third one that we have as a panelist is a gentleman I know very well from political circles. Ule <laughs> Molale <laughs> He is a manager uh, responsible for community development at Mangaung Metropolitan Municipality. He is also a former president, if I'm not mistaken, of SAMU, uh, the South African Municipal Workers Union. Uh, others, I'm just left with two. We also have Mema Tsidiso Matlati. Uh, who is a lecturer at Goldfields Tivet College here in the Free State. Uh, she is also an alumni of the Central University of Technology Free State. And lastly, but definitely not least, we have Me Murungwa Masipala. Uh, she is an 18-year-old uh, vendor lady from the village called Hamashau Bordway. I'm, I'm hoping I pronounced it correctly. Uh, she's also a, a poet in her own right and currently studying uh, a BSEC degree majoring in bio, biochemistry and uh, physiology. So those are our panelists for today. Uh, and now for the main discussion, I would like to hand over to Marcia. Hopefully she can briefly introduce herself and then we'll take it uh, uh, after that uh, input by Marcia. Over to you, Marcia. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to greet everyone. My name is uh, Marcia Ramidike from Zanin Limbo. Um, 
I'm currently at uh, Pretoria. Uh, I'm doing my second year in forensic science and technology at UNIS. And I'm a former University of the Free State student. I was studying law from 2016 up to 2019. Okay, Masha, you go ahead with the book discussion. Sorry for that. Okay, sorry. You may go ahead with the book discussion. The panelists will respond to your input. Hopefully, you can, uh, you know, have 10, 15 minutes at most taking us through your book, what inspired your book, the content of your book, uh, maybe the synopsis of your book. And then our panelists will then respond and have some exchange given your content. Okay, no problem. Um, my book is about uh, black text. And what inspired me to write uh, this book was when my mother passed on uh, 2014, I was left with uh, two of my siblings. And by that time, we didn't have like um, supportive relatives and all that. So what made me write this book was I, was I wanted to be able to take off my little brother and sister and that's where i saw that uh, it was actually um important because i was giving back at home so that made me realize that once we start giving back at home we can actually change the world because when i started giving back at home i saw my like, my siblings um their lives were improving and when i gave them food at home when i used to provide and as the only one as an 18 year old child providing to those kids i realized that you know what um this is actually important, and this is a story that I can just go out there and tell the world, even though I won't tell it um, directly, but then I can go out there and share my story. That's where I started writing a book about um, this other smart girl from a very, very poor background. Her name is Ntati, and she went to university. She was so smart, she passed and all of that. But then at the other hand, NS first took her to school, and um, basic education was for free so she always told her parents that you know what when i'm done with school i'm gonna um give back at home i'm gonna do this for you i'm gonna do that for for you guys and they believed her and then the mother at home she started relaxing knowing that um my child will actually um come and help me build me a house take her siblings to school and all that but then that's what a lot of um parents are doing lately when we go to universities they relax they just they don't do anything with their lives they know who Masha will come back and give me something at least in my situation we didn't have a parent I was the parent of the kids that's why I said okay this is a good thing but then parents nowadays they don't I'm not saying they don't look for jobs but then they just relax and when we are done that's what I want to do they just tell you what to do with your money they don't know they don't Think that maybe I have needs, I have the things that I can do with my life and all that. So, what Tati did was she went to um in, to Pretoria. When she came to Pretoria, um she got hit by a car because she didn't have a place to sleep. When she got hit up, hit by a car, she met this other guy, Mariki Bulelo, and that guy was her boyfriend. And when that guy was her boyfriend, took her to the hospital and took her in, introduced her to the life of partying. Uh, the life of being independent, the life of not giving back at home because he had everything in his life. And nice. she got pregnant by that guy and found out that that guy, um, the money that he has, is not the money that he worked for. It's the money that he did some sacrifices with it. He, he didn't work for it as she worked for it. And then she turned her back on her family. That guy ended up sacrificing um, Tati's siblings to make more money. And Tati uh, had ended up having a stroke and she lost her job. She became miserable. At the end of the day, her little sister Bulelo chose the right way. She went to school, she stayed away from guys and she looked for her mother. She found her, she built her a house and she got married in the right way. The moral of the story was to show young people out there that we shouldn't compare ourselves with other people because we don't know where their money comes from. Sometimes you might come from a very poor background and the other person has is from a very rich background and once you compare yourself with those people you're going to lose yourself and if you like you turn it back on your family you never know if you're going to need them in future or not so i it's actually promoting black text because if i help you as my brother 
one day, even when I need help, you will be there to help me. But then if I say that I've made it and turn my back on you, you might not help me and I'll end up being alone and not have any help. So that's what the book is about. Oh, thank you for that uh, brief uh, input. If I may just ask before I give over to our panelists, uh, uh, I, I, I get what inspired the book, uh, but perhaps if you can just explain to the rest of us, is this the only book that you have? Uh, uh, how did you go about funding your book project? Uh, how has the response been? I'm just trying to get a sense of, you know, uh, the behind the scene work that you, you actually are involved in, in terms of publishing your All work. Right. Okay, um, this is the only book that I have so far, but then I'm currently writing the second one um, called um, Train Station 2214 Forever Street. And the person who helped me to publish my book was my grandfather. He's a very supportive person in our lives, in my, in like my life and my siblings' lives. And when I told him that I want to publish the book and the reason why I want to publish the book, he actually thought, oh, okay, let me help her. And also my NSFAS money, I took some of the NSFAS money and took to the funding of the book. And he also took, like, also, like I took 50% of my NSFAS money and published the book. And he also took his pension money and gave it to the book. So when I have ideas, I have things to do. My father is really the one who calls me to find everything. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Osneo, can you perhaps give us your your your, your take on the uh, discussion? And I think you will be followed by Bade Epule, and others will come thereafter. Osneo. Thank you very much. Um, I really first would like to start by commending Marcia for taking such a step um, writing a book, especially on such a topic. I think it's a, it's a, it's a much needed topic, especially uh, for our generation, given that we usually feel like we do not like the things that um, happen to us as a generation, and we feel the need to, to address those things. But in addressing those things, it's mostly as though we retaliate you know, and become uh, rebellious, we become rebellious and understanding the African context, Ubuntu and well, black text, which, well, of course, what I... I to ask me then? I'll answer what I know. Okay. So I need to print it out? Um. Why? Because there is one in my. Must be on mute, please. Check your mics. I don't have to print. Oh. I got it on my email. I need to go with hard copy. Can it somebody is? engage? When you say. Case. I'm attending to it uh, physically. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. So, um, like I was saying, we usually then just want to retaliate every time when we feel we need to be addressing a situation that or a, a topic that is as heavy as that. But I like the fact that it means for us going forward as future parents, things differently sorry, because sorry. we now understand. Um, um, issues around such things. But of course, this is not to also bash um, the fact that there is right. black tax. And of course, I do not like the term um, okay. black tax because I'm taxing, okay. it's it's not something nice. There's nothing I cute about right. tax. And we no. always feel we do not want to be. There's an obligation to it. So the mere fact that it's black tax, I don't trust myself. Because as an African nation, we, we do not necessarily see this as paying back, per se. Ubuntu to us, we, we, we appreciate, we show our parents and, and whoever in the family has contributed to us being the people that uh, we become. We show the um, appreciation or gratitude through also taking care of them, through assisting their children. And usually when you think of 
um, the whole idea of giving back to the people who make you the person that you are, it's usually through, you, you, you usually feel you do not know how to say thank you, such that you, you then decide that I'll then take my sister to school to show my parents that I actually appreciate this. But now the problem around the concept of black tax is as a, as a society, as a black society, as a black nation, we, we are a society that does things a certain way and we see um, those things as okay until there's an external member uh, or an external person rather who comes and sees this as a problem such that they even give concepts like a black tax. So, um, you know, if, if I had it my way, this is a concept that we would probably need to work around because it gives a very negative connotation of the idea behind the concept. And the concept is Ubuntu to give back. And hence I like um, the fact that with, with Masha uh, addressing the issue, she addresses it from a point of uh, our African perspective of giving back. And it's not necessarily a, a backlash of we are paying our parents because with some of us, we come from disadvantaged backgrounds. And you will understand when one succeeds, that the idea is to take everyone else with you. And hence, we feel the need to give back. And of course, if you want to address it also on a political level, it does help us uh, move forward in terms of economic development. To make an example, if I succeed um, in, in university, I get a job and I start doing well, and uh, my parents are no longer at a point where they are able to also do the same for my siblings. If I do that for my siblings, let's say four siblings, um, for example, then I've, I've moved four people with me who then also contribute to the economy of the country. And by so doing, we move forward as a country. So I think there are things that we do that, that are good, that to a certain extent are good because they move us forward. Not only our immediate families, not only our small communities where we come from, but the nation at large. But it becomes a problem also when we then take advantage of, 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 such, of such concepts. And I, I, uh, Masha mentioned the fact that some people actually relax. Some parents know that my child is in university, I'm going to struggle for four years, but after that, I'm free. And there's also, when you are a girl child, they also bank on the fact that you will get married and when you do, um, your partner also starts contributing to, to this whole idea. But what they don't think about is the fact that in as much as you also would love to uplift the people, your people, where you come from, you also need to build yourself. Now, if Nero spends 10 years of her life after, you know, starting to work, 10 years of her life, ensuring that everyone else behind her is being pushed forward, it's, it's well and good because they will be pushed forward and they'll probably also contribute in other people's lives uh, in terms of pushing them forward. But also the risk is in me pushing people forward, I don't push myself forward such that when I then have children, they also then have to suffer what I suffered. Not because I was irresponsible, but because I was, I was busy pushing my siblings. But now we also then create a chain of, um, should I say, generational... Um, problems in terms of um, black tax because we are then perpetuating uh, the problem. Um, so I think to a certain extent, it's, it's a good thing, although I do feel that we do need to identify how we can possibly, in trying to move people, how do we also ensure that we do not stay behind while we move others forward? and we, we move together. So, um, yeah, I think that's just uh, my two cents in, in, in that conversation. No, no, thank you very much. I, I, I want to pick up on that and invite Ndate Pule as, as, a, as a, you know, a, a, a trade unionist who, who sometimes speak on behalf of workers uh, to explain why our parents as workers uh, give us this burden called uh, black tax. Uh, I'm just provoking him as a trade unionist to carry this discussion forward. And that the pool. No, no, thanks, thanks um, for the the invite. And uh, I think I came in as a parent that has a child at the university, not as a trade union. <laughs> So I'll I'll speak from that angle because my my child is at the 
now first year at the University of Free State. The firstborn is a graduate of the CUT. He's a teacher by profession now. The second born, the boy, it's also the a graduate of CUT. I have two CUT graduates, <laughs> and now I have the daughter doing the social work with the investor of Free State. So the invite is as, as, as a parent, not a trade union, because it's the, the life that I've lived before. <laughs> so I've passed that life for now. So, but I, I like, uh, let me congratulate Marcia then in terms of the good work that she have done and also the the the, the book that she have actually launched. And I think Osnawa is also spot on uh, by saying that uh, we must not fall into a foreign terms when we deal with issues of morality. Because let's remember what Nelson Mandela said when he addressed the, the, the issue of morality. I'll quote him, he said, a movement without vision is a movement without moral <coughs> foundations. So as African, we are always moved from a perspective of moral foundations. And how was that moral foundation aspired to be? It was created for that a child is not a child that belongs to Sokwani, if you are raised by your parents, but you are a child of the entire village. So when you worked as 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 a child of that particular family, you are then expected to give back into the society that have actually built you. That's why we are able then to uh, sponsor your own uh, uncles, kids, your aunt, and and so forth. So it's not something like a black text, as if uh, it's something that is forced on us. It's something that is actually encouraged and in terms of the moral values. And the moral values um, that our parents and great grandparents built on was based on the biblical um, verses. That always says that the hands that give get more blessed um, than uh, the one that actually does not give. So it is through that particular foundation that we were raised in that we are able then to extend whatever God has blessed you with to your own immediate family and extended family and the society at large. So it's not uh, uh, what other people term it as a black test. It's, a, uh, it's something that is legislated and forced on you. But we are doing it out of morality. We are doing it because the scripture that raised us, that raised our grandparents, dictate that uh, we must always give with an open heart. So giving uh, cannot actually be equated to uh, something that is regulated like tax and then term black tax. So I am not for uh, such terminology, but um, we have seen throughout the history and through the biblical terms that whoever that have actually uh, and rely on blessing uh, continuously. So I think it's in uh, 9 and 7. It says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsions, for God loves a cheerful giver. So it's a scripture that says, if you are a cheerful giver, <clears throat> like in the case of what Mashi have related, you were fortunate that the government have created condition to actually study to an NSFAS. Uh, in our golden eras, we call it TEFSA loans, because we are product of TEFSA loans. And because that people that pay the tax is not your parents alone, but it's a broader society that have actually paid tax that have made it possible for you then to study and complete your education. So. The good thing is for you then to reinvest that that the society have actually invested in you. So if you extend it by uh, ensuring that your uncle, kids, your aunt, your grandparents will build them and so forth, you are doing so because you are reinvesting back on the society that have actually produced you. So it's morally correct. 
and, and spiritually correct. And that attract um, multiple blessings. And we're a product of those. I'm not ashamed. I've been raised by my grandmother. And I was able then to see uh, the university lives and, and, and also my siblings were blessed to have actually be graduates of the universities because of the investment like those step salons and so forth. So um, that's, I take it as a foundation of the moral uh, foundations and biblical foundation. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, and that, uh, for that uh, insightful uh, input. Uh, uh, may I just indicate that uh, after all our panelists, uh, Marcia will still come back and uh, uh, wrap up our discussions uh, before I give over to Ndade uh, Marcus. Uh, is Mary Filio Masondo there? Uh, I think uh, she can come in if she's uh, logged in. Yes, Ndade, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Oh. Yeah, you may continue, ma'am. Hi, um, greetings to everyone. Um, in terms of this term, black text, I I feel like um, there is there should there is something that you might be missing because I believe that um, if somebody has to give, they have to give from the abundance. Now, with, with black tax, it's not actually from abundance. It's, you find that it's professionals that find themselves with, I'll put it in inverted commas, with a burden to assist other, other, other maybe siblings or whoever that they need to assist. So I, 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 I'm pushing the matter back to the parents um, to say, um, as parents, as, as an elderly person that you say I am, we have, to, we have to fix this. We cannot allow the, the status quo to remain the same like it is now. We cannot allow our, our professionals to, to have a burden that they have to, you know, to 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 assist, even if they they are not in a position to. Um, we have to work in such a way that we we create wealth. Really, now we have to shift this thing. We have to create wealth for our kids. We have to ensure that that the the coming generation don't have the same burden. I understand with the with the older generation. It was because maybe they were, they did not have um, maybe jobs or they did not have opportunities. But I still, I feel that these days we really have opp opportunities, no matter how old you are. You know, you know, at 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 the age that I am, we have opportunities. We have the 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 opportunity to change whatever that was going on. We cannot allow our professionals to 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 be pulling everybody even if they don't they they cannot um they cannot um um afford that so we i when i when I, when I was i was i was looking at this matter i was looking at the time that um you know you know culturally culturally you'd hear somebody says uh this is this is a wife of my 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 father's cows which means culturally the father would take care of ensuring that the son gets married that the son has got inheritance that the son has got everything that they need this is not this is not it's not it's not a matter of culture something went wrong some way of which we need to fix it and even i'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad that the the speaker that that spoke before me alluded to the bible which also says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, it says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. A good man does that. So uh, this black text has got, I, I, I feel like there is, 
there is something that our communities, that the, our society is not doing right. You know, if 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 it has to to be ongoing, that okay, when I leave, I, I leave my work, then somebody must come and help me build my house, raise my children. Something is not right somewhere, so it needs to be fixed going forward, so that we don't have a society that um, is always having things to drag. You know, when 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 you compare, like when you compare. Um, 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 people of different colors, you, 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 you keep having the same, the same uh, qualification, doing, uh, earning the same salary. You, you, you can see that you know there is something we are that the the, the, our, the the blacks are like pulling. They're pulling the a whole full of you know a whole lot of 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 things that they are not supposed to be there. Hence, they are. They are struggling, you know, they are struggling to, to, to get wherever they need to be. So I just want to, with, with this matter, I just want to say to all of us, like, we need to get a way, find a way of fixing this. It's, it's, it is not supposed to be the way it is. If I help, I must help with whatever that I have. I love the I, I like the verse that you read that you must give cheerfully. Now with black text, it's not cheerful. It's something you feel that you no, know, I, I don't have money, but you know, the aunt, the wife, whatever, they, they are waiting for you. You have to do it, even if you feel that you don't have the money to do it. So um we need we need to have a way, we need to to create programs that will assist our people to say, people. This black tax is killing the professionals. We need to find a way of making sure that after you, you know, everybody, everybody is able is able to 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 to, to carry their own. I don't I don't want to to say the way burden, but they are to carry their own um, um, to going forward to carry their own. I'll 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 loosely say burden going forward so um yes black te black text is there but it's not supposed to be the way it is it's not supposed to be the way it is our our brothers wants to marry they can't marry because somebody's waiting for an upstairs somebody's waiting to the house to be built you you just wonder why didn't they build their own houses they are staying in a forum. They are, they are old, but they still want the houses to be extended. Why do you want the house to be extended when you are old? When there's no more children, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that are happening that I feel they are not right. They need to be fixed. I do not expect my children to come and buy whatever for me because I feel like no ways. They have to take care of their own now. They have to take care of themselves. They have to develop themselves. If there's cousins or whoever that needs to be assisted, how about if we assist them to assist themselves? How do we do that? We can suggest that, why don't you open a small business, my cousin? I'll give you 5,000 to go and buy stuff for you so that you can take care of yourself. Not for four years you're carrying a person. It's not, it's, 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 it's just, I feel like it's just so unfair. My, thank my, you. My, 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 my apologies, yes. Oh, thank you very much Shime, for that uh, input. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the discussion is revolving around empowering uh, the Black nation to introspect, uh, all thanks to uh, Mashia's book. Though I think we have not all of us read it, but uh, given the hypnosis that we got from the author and the discussions, uh, uh, I, I believe at the end of the day, we will all be empowered. Uh, may I now invite uh, May Matsidi Somakati, if she's there, to take over? Hey, yes, and I am here. Okay, you may go ahead, May. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the invitation that you have given me. 
it's really a great pleasure. Uh, hearing Osma Shia writing about black tax is a, is, a, is a very huge topic that to deal with. For starters, so, uh, one can ask, um, black tax in modern South Africa, is it a culturally bounded or is it driven by societal perspectives? That is a question that we might ask, ask ourselves in this modern South Africa. Is black tax uh, driven by cultural backgrounds or is it driven by social perspectives? There are many things that we can look into. Um, when we start, we can say that as black South African or as black communities, we have been disadvantaged when it comes to um, generational wealth. We have been uh, disadvantaged by the apartheid system. We have been uh, disadvantaged by the system that uh, bounded black people not to gain um, a good way of living. As such, we found ourselves fighting back in order to close up the gaps. The gaps that our forefathers, our mothers, our uncles, our aunties, they were not even able to uh, unlock them. Therefore, here we are, we are carrying up the burden, like Umeri Filo is, is saying. We are carrying up a burden in order to close up the gap that was there with our forefathers. Now we are carrying the whole families in order to see to it that the families are not, um, they don't live in a hardship financially. They are successful and things like those. But in return, we find out that Black tax on its own, it can make uh, families to uplift their standards of living, or it can make one who is providing to get deeper indebted. I don't, I don't know if you hear me clearly. In such a way that you as a person who is providing, sometimes you put your own needs on hold because you want your siblings to have better education, to have clothes, to have food in the house. But when as an individual, are you, are you looking after yourself? Some people will say uh, you are being now selfish because you are looking after yourself. It's not being selfish. In some instances, when we continue with this black tax system, we are forgetting the number one, which is yourself. And when you forget about yourself, there are many things that can go wrong. Psychologically, you can be disorientated. Emotionally, you can be disorientated. Because once you have a financial means, but you are not able to fulfill your needs, it, it's a problem on its own. It's a problem on its own. So the question that we can ask ourselves also is, when does a black tax becomes a problem? Yes, we are giving out to the, to the families. Yes, we are trying them to have a better life. Yes, we are doing it in order to close up the gaps financially. But when does it become a problem? The moment you as a person become emotionally burdened, that's where the problem begins. Because you will be going to work, but then you are not going to be fulfilled. I'm just going there month end, I'm miserable. Because I know umama, will call me, hey, Matidiso, Mtanam, Amanzi, Avaliilwe. I have to go and pay my bills a kai. Then Umtana will call, Sisi, Andina Imali a transport, therefore I have to give in Imali a transport. What about me? In some instances, I won't be able to pay some bills because I have to send a certain income home. Some instances, I will have to reverse some of um, debit orders because I have to send a so it becomes a burden when there is no limit to it. There are greater risks that we need to look into when we are implementing this system of ours. Number one, I will say, if there is a lack of focus and priority, this system of ours, it does not help us at all. Therefore, there has to be focus and priority. A person whom you are helping has to know from which point are you helping up until to which point? There has to be a limit. And secondly, there must be principles that we are setting. I'm helping you, not for you to settle back and say, I have income as we give her We are not doing it like that. 
I'm setting up AMA principles. I'm helping you so that you can have a better life for yourself. So that you are not going to go back and say, Diakela. Ne? So AMA priorities must be set clearly. A person must understand, you are helping, I'm helping you from this point so that you can get to this point. But when you are getting to this point, I am not there with you. You will have to swim alone. And then in number three, we can say that, uh, giving back, sometimes you will find out that you are not only doing it for your, for your, 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 your siblings, but there are other relatives that really, really need help. And you know, as black communities, how it goes. Once you help umtanaka auntie, then u uncle naya uzot will say, but you helped you, your, your, your auntie. Why can't you help me? You understand? Now it, it creates a greater gap. Everyone will want something from you. So it, 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 it needs us to have a limit. I am helping this one because there was a need that arises at that point. But if there is no need, therefore, I am not going to step in. Let me quote one of uh, our offers in that is Fisom Zobe in his quote of Black Text when he said, I quote, in majority of Black families, success is multi-generational quest fueled by lifelong multi-generational sacrifice. That's what Ubud Spiso is saying. In simple terms, he is indicating that the pressure to ask young people to play black text, it is resentless. We are chasing luxury life, but the reality is that not all of us get to live that life because we are giving back more than enough. Only few get a chance to live that, that life. And when you see your own peers, your own colleagues being fulfilled in terms of their needs and, and being in the same salary scale, do you know how, how, that, how that affects you as a person? You are this young professional, you don't have your own car. Every time when people knock off, they go to the basement, they go to their car. Where now, where are you going? There you go. You are going to get a meter taxi. Sometimes you struggle. People will be saying, uh -uh, we don't want to give you a lift because my darling, we are earning a same salary. But they don't know the depth. The thing that I am raising today is that we are not, we are not, we cannot be forced to do it. It must be by choice. And that choice, it has to have a limit. And our parents as well, they not, they don't have to enforce us to do things while mm -hmm. they were not able to do it. I don't know if, if, if this one, it is understandable. If Umama was unable to build a house, I am not going to build a house because Umama wants me to build a house. I am going so willingly to build a house for my own family to have a roof under their head, not because they are enforcing me to. Ubaba did not have a car. I am not going to buy a car because Ubaba said, I took you to school to the best school and whatsoever. It was his responsibility. Mine, I'm also having the responsibility with my kids. Now that I don't have a car, I am not expecting my kids to buy me a car. It means I, ha I have to work for myself. Therefore, what I am bringing in to us is that black text on its own, let, let us not look into it only in a, in a positive way. It also has a negatives of it. And these negatives, if we are not dealing with it, psychologically, they are going, they are going to kill us. These are uh, 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 pressures that I am, I am talking about here. For an example, one person being an umbrella of the whole family. Financially, you are looking for the whole family. Here I am, I'm the only one who's working at home. I'm looking for my, my, my brother's kids. I am looking for my sister's kids. I am looking for my own kids. You see, you see how, how, how distorted will I be? And the, the other thing is that when you're taking, you, you, you paying AMA bills for, let's say for an example, you are paying uh, fees for your, for, your, for, your, for your siblings or for your, or your brothers or children, then you find out that I am paying all Matiriso school fees. Matiriso, I'm expecting here to do what? To excel in her school uh, 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 work. Ne? But in return, Matiriso, what is she doing? She's not passing the modules, meaning that you find Matiriso being a third year doing the second and the third year modules. How long will it be I providing for Matiriso? I will be bonded, meaning that there are some of the things that I won't be able to get because I will still be fulfilling for Umatiriso. 
And then uh, once Umar Tiruso becomes financially excluded at, 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 at university, now as an auntie, I have to step in, meaning that I am burdened financially. The last point that I am taking is that a uh, black tax, it is not only, okay, fine, let me put it in this way. In this uh, economical system that we find ourselves into, our parents also have to look in uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm touching a sensitive issue here. Because lobola, it is one of uh, it is one of the aspects that that in, are included in the black tax. Like Umama, I like the point that Umama Rifilo it made. Ukuti. In uh, uh, what did you say? Something like that. He said she said that. Mosadi meaning that Ubaba. If I get married, it means that whoever that is going to marry me. The father, his father is supposed to pay the uh, uh, ilobola for me. But in this generation that we find ourselves in that you as, uh, as uh, a son in the family, you are the one who will be asked 70,000 to pay ilobola for me. Then you will have to go and find a loan. And then you come back, you do umembelo, umembelo for me. My God, it's a financial burden on its own and is going to affect our marriage. So these are some of the things that we need to look into. When we say e black tech, how far can we go with it? What are the things that we can do? The limits that we can put, how to go about in addressing it. And then we are done. We know that it is a system that we are in control of it. It is a system that we are able to implement and we are able to say that this negativity that comes with it, we are going to get rid of it. Thank you very much, Indadi. Thank you, me. Thank you, me. Uh, uh, from 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 what I'm gathering, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, it appears as though this is more of a moral question than anything else, uh, embedded in our African beliefs and humanity. And given that it's 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 Africa Day. Uh, uh, I'm happy that uh, the discussion is taking uh, the kind of direction it's taking. Our last panelist is a, a an 18-year-old uh, young lady uh, by the name of uh, Murunwa. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, she will uh, be our last panelist, uh, but we'll again, after her input, invite Masia for a quick response. And thereafter, if there are any Q and A's, you will will take it uh, further as well. Uh, 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 you may take over. Um, thank you very much. Um, good day, everyone. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, okay. So um, this is a very sensitive issue for me since I'm a very young um, person, um, and having to hear all these um, inputs being made by old people. Um, it has put um, onto me some knowledge that um, I myself didn't know. So firstly, I'd like to thank um, Marcia for writing such a book to inform um, more than me, um, the youth, to say um, there's a certain limit of um, Black uh, takes that you have to go through um, as you graduate, as you become an employed person. So um, let me start by having my first input before I take on every what everybody else has said. Uh, for me, I always thought Black Takes was um, when you graduate, you have to give back to your family, give back to your parents. They raised you, so now you have to kind of um, give back to them for saying, Mama, Tata, thank you for raising me. Um, this is what I have to bring back. This is all your 12 years or 18 years of hard work. Um, me going to school, this is what um, you have raised, so thank you. Um, and I would also like to uh, look back at how I used to think Black Text worked. I thought Black Text was a thing where you provide uh, for a long time. You don't provide for now, and then you stop. You provide every time you have to keep providing. But as you grow up, you realize that no man there's going to be debts that are going to be on me. There's going to be financial stress. There's going to be um, a lot of things that I myself have to provide myself for. So can I keep on doing all this um, financial provision back to my family for 
this long time, can I do it? And from uh, what I've um, heard from other speakers, especially Mary Filo, thank you very much. I was enlightened for a moment because now that I think about it, black text has to go only to a certain limit. You cannot um, drag everybody with you and become a pulley to pull back everybody to the top because you yourself, you are also trying to keep yourself afloat, hence why your parents decided that you need to go to school. So when you are afloat, it doesn't mean that everybody who is deep down now, you have to also drag them as well. You have to give to a certain point and then they can help themselves up. So um, I think there's um, a similar book to Masha's by Nick Mklongo, which says, is Black takes a burden or is it Ubuntu? That is where the balance becomes um, a bit shaky because now people think, when you give back uh, in the terms of black taste, you are a, a nice person, you're giving back it's Ubuntu. But at, at some point it becomes a burden, like um, the previous speaker said. It becomes a burden because you do not have financial freedom. And I may not know what financial freedom is as young as I am, um, but I think um, financial freedom is now where you are able to live a lifestyle where you know that, okay, when um, the money comes in, I paid everything, I can now relax. But how will you relax when you know that you have to pay for mama's bills, father's bills, sister's bills, um, everybody in the family? How will you relax? And it creates such a mental breakdown, especially to a young person. Imagine 21, you are a graduate, you finally have a job, but now you have to drag everybody with you. You cannot even enjoy your own money because now you have to support everybody in the family. So um, referring to the book that Marcia wrote on um, this person who um, now compared herself to somebody who did not have to do black takes, I think it goes back to educating us as the youth that we are all not from the same background. And not coming from the same background doesn't mean that now because um, my friend is giving 50,000 back to her family, now I also have to feel the pressure of saying, you know, now I also have to build my mom a double story. I have to build my mom, I have to buy my mom a car and all that. Black takes has to go to a certain limit. You cannot do everything forever, honestly. I, I come from a family where my father was the first person to graduate and he took um my um second the second um the one that follows him, my aunt, to school. But after that, um my aunt, my aunt had to do for the other one. So I think that on its own has taught me that my dad did a certain portion of what he could. And then my aunt, now that you as my aunt, you are financially stable, you have to carry on the chain. So I think it also goes back to how long can you do it for? You can only do it to a certain limit because now it becomes, people become now re re reliable to you to say, every time they have problems, they come to you, I need 500, I need this, but are you satisfying your own needs? Sometimes you might even find that you, you don't have money to yourself. Every time your money comes in, it goes to other people. Um, so it's a very sensitive issue. It's a very sensitive topic. But for me as a young person, it teaches me that um, when I do graduate and become a university graduate and I am working, I do need to limit way um, I'm giving. And giving in a way of when I do give, I become happy. Because sometimes you will give, but you're in facially and emotionally, you will not want to give because you are forced to give. And that's not the definition of giving. Giving means that I am willingly um, giving you something that is from the heart. But now when I'm forced to give it to you, um, it doesn't really sit well with me. So the book is teaching me that I need to give to a certain point. I need to um, limit where black text goes. I need to also limit um, how much I can do as a human being, because now I also need to be financially stable. I need to be financially stable in a sense of saying, um, the job that I went to do, am I enjoying it? Am I enjoying going to work every day? What am I going to work for? Who am I working for? Am I working for um, my family or am I working for myself? I think that is where um, the conflict comes in. And that is um, what I have learned throughout. So thank you, Marsha, for the book. It has enlightened me in so many ways. And to also other speakers for opening up on issues that I never thought I was going to come across as I grew up. Because I feel like um, now that um, Mary Fila has spoken Yo, now I'm, I'm scared to say, yo, now I have to build my mother a double story and whatever. But um, it has also taught me that I don't need to, it's a sense of giving. I need to limit where um, my money goes. And I also need to look at um, how I am giving. I cannot support someone for five years 
and not seeing any change in that person that I'm supporting. I can say, okay, cousin, let me give you 10,000. You start your own business. Let's see where it is going. And then from there on, you need to stand on your own. I can't support you for five years. What, 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 what change is going on? Because now giving has to, oh, when you say, for example, if a friend says, please borrow me 50 rand, I need to buy maize meal. I'll pay it back when I have it. I need to see that maize meal to see what did you do with that 50 rand. Same with black takes. If you say, cousin, please borrow me 10,000. I want to start a business. Can we see that business flourish? Can we see you uplifting other people as well? If you say, I'm giving back to my community that raised me, can we see changes in the community so that other people, so that I don't have like a backlog of people that I'm supporting. I need to see where my... um uh my um sense of giving is going i need to see the progress of what i am giving for and um yeah i think that is what i can reflect on what other people have spoken and the book on um on itself thank you very much uh, thank you very much thank you very much uh, Muruna. uh ladies and gentlemen there are a few uh, uh comments in our chat uh, section I would, at this point, just like to read a few. Uh, uh, Dina M says, I'm of the perception that the African philosophy of Ubuntu has been tainted by societal standards. We have now inherited norms that are no longer of benefit to us. The black tax is a vicious cycle crippling young professionals uh, more uh, psychologically than financially. And I will continue to read others as they come in. Uh, at this point, I will invite Marcia to, to, to come back. Uh, but before she comes back, I, I would like to also emphasize or maybe put a point across that uh, in, in my view, I, I don't think this should only be viewed from a financial perspective because as a uh, black people young black people as we uh, grow up in our respective careers and uh, spaces where we are active we we come across uh, uh, opportunities uh, that can be beneficial to those we have left behind so so there's also an obligation there i think uh, and that they spoke about a moral obligation to, 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 to open doors for others and without necessarily going deep in our pockets. You know, access to higher education, access to or, uh, employment opportunities, and so on and so forth. So, so because we have a lot of catching up to do as Black people, uh, uh, I am of the view that you know, to borrow the words of the Chancellor of the University of the Free State, Ndade Bonang Mohale, uh, lift others as you rise. I think he has a book titled Lift as You Rise. So, so there's also that obligation to give back to the community, not just to our own families, uh, in various ways other than uh, financial. Of course, the financial one will always be controversial and a lengthy topic, uh, given the constraints we all find ourselves in. Can I please invite Marcia uh, for a quick response? And thereafter, colleagues, if any of you has got a, a question or an input, you will just uh, you know, raise your hand or give an indication. Thank you. Uh, Marcia, you are muted. Marcia, your mic. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, what I'm what I was saying is that um, when I first sat down and wrote this book, I didn't know that I would be amongst great people, and they'll share these views based on this topic. Like, I'm actually shocked. I think maybe you should create something like uh, an organization or a talk where such topics, this topic, will, will be like spoken, like, will be spoken, and people will just go out there and. Learn because I'm also I've also learned a lot based on this topic. And one day when I go out and motivate people, I'll actually take your points and actually tell them up, uh, tell people about them because you test based on Lobola. And one thing that um uh many of the speakers didn't touch based on is that sometimes black text is not by choice. 
but then it comes to you. Let's say your parents die at a young age like mine. I'm going to have to be those kids' um, parent, whether I like it or not. Like Black Tech, is, it's going to be with me, whether I like it or not. When my little sister gets married, I'm going to have to be there as my parent. Like last year, my little brother made a baby with um, this other 16-year-old, and I had to step in and help to take care of that baby, go to labor and all that. Those are the things that someone suffers with as once your parent is gone and your relatives are not that good. And one thing, um, another thing that I'd like to say is I'm going to be having a, a book launch at Bloomfontein uh, Bloom Plaza uh, on the 5th of June, uh, 2021. Um, I'm inviting all of you entrants um, for free. You can RSVP uh, my number. It's 065-944-0471. Uh, or you can find me at um, masharamudige at gmail.com. Or you can text me on Facebook. It's Masha Ramudige. You'll see um, this book. It's um, you just see an orange calf. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Marcus, and thank you, Ntatepule, Fezile Murwaneo, and Mary Fule. You are great people. But then I think the reason why this uh, this day is here is because it wants us to go out there and start an organization where black techs will will be the, the thing we'll talk about it because some other people now if i have friends and i have two siblings to take care of and then they are buying cars they are buying houses and i can't do it because my little brother and sister have to go to university then i'll be depressed i'll have anxiety and i'll commit suicide and you wonder why did masha kill herself maybe this this, this black text thing is one of the reasons why people actually kill themselves but then we don't know because we don't want to talk about it. But then since we have spoken about it today, I think maybe there's something that we can actually do about um, this topic, not only on Africa Day, but then as something that we can carry on and teach other young people out there. And maybe they can also express their feelings, how they feel about this whole black text thing and all that. Yeah, I'd like to say thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay, thank you, thank you, Marcia. Uh, I see colleagues, uh, many of you have actually raised your hands. I'm coming. Uh, there's a question about uh, where do we buy your book? How do we access copies of your book? Uh, my book, you can get it um, from me. The book is 120, and I courier it through PEP, Gas 60 Rand. So in total, it's going to be 180. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, colleagues, let me just uh, note a few hands here. I uh, don't know if I'm audible. Okay, I'm audible. Uh, I see Ndate Pule, you raised your hand first. Uh, in this order, colleagues, uh, we'll start with Ndate Pule uh, mm -hmm. and then come to, uh, is it Me Maya Zukiswa? And then Zinaki uh, Lesotu, and then Chwaro Shuping, Neo, followed by Asante Masati, and lastly Rifilwe. Uh, in that order, I will repeat the order again, colleagues. It will be Ntatepule, mm -hmm. Maya Zukiswa, second, Zinaki Lesotu, followed by Chwaro Shuping, followed by Neo followed by Asante, Mahlazi, and followed by Rifilwe. Uh, you, you may keep your questions uh, brief, colleagues. Mashia, please stay with us. No, my, mine is a, it's a, it was a comment, a part in short. Uh, maybe Mr. Mapile need to also create um, another platform where we we'll deal with our cultural beliefs and, and, and so forth, because um, we can't confuse even uh, a topic like Lobola uh, with the black tax. Ne? It's, 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 it's totally wrong because Lobola then, uh, it's something that's so special uh, that to, uh, has been developed by Africans and we are saying you pay Lobola to a family that have raised you a wife. is a sense of actually appreciating and says that family have raised this beautiful queen for you that you are starting a family with. 
And then you are then make them to acknowledge and appreciate the efforts in bringing that queen into your life. Ne? And the money is used of that lobola to prepare both of you to a future. So maybe there is an abuse, but we cannot confuse abuse with the real purpose of lobola. And it can't be equated to, to black text. It's an appreciation that the boys uh, family appreciate uh, the girl's family for raising her because she's raised that side. And then you need to uh, accept her in your own life. Maybe it's a topic of, uh, for, for another day. The second comment, I think it's um, giving. Giving does not have a golden rule. There's no way where you are told that because you were raised by your grandparents, you are then forced to give forever. You give voluntarily out of your own heart, as I've related also the scripture. As you give out of your own heart, then you attract multiples of blessings. I'm talking from the experience because, as I've said, I was raised by my grandparents. I have a foundation that I am giving back to the society through the foundations. And I can tell you that the more I give, is the more that I have certain things that I didn't even dream that I would have. But I know because I'm raised by my grandparents, it's when we give a person that does not have any means to survive, the only thing that that particular person has is to pray for the one that you have to actually give. So as you, you give more to others when you afford, you will then attract multiple of prayers. That's why you would, uh, then get certain successes that you, you could not even imagine that you would actually have. It's because you have a multitude of prayers that you receive for those that could not even afford to have to actually pay back. So there's no golden rule uh, in, 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 in giving. So we, but we, we need to, uh, I'm, I'm happy, I'm so excited about the platform that has been created. And thank you, Marcia, for ensuring that the university have hosted us so that we can share this experience. And uh, may God bless you. And um, with your book, will ultimately come on your launch in Bluefontein. And I hope that the Marcus would uh, facilitate that so that uh, we, we, we support you throughout. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think the speaker can go on. Okay, uh, good afternoon, colleagues, and thank you, facilitator. Give me a uh, For me, uh, thank you to the author and all the panelists for what they have really brought on the table for us. But for me, uh, I think um, if we may have a platform where we may uh, talk with parents or to parents, uh, to understand their perspective on this. Uh, maybe this is a call for the next research because their perspective may be different from our perspective as the young professionals. I'm talking it because I'm 40 plus, which means I'm more on the parent side. But I'll also talk from the experience that I was one of those who break the cycle of the poverty cycle of first to grade to get grade 12 in a big family and study further. So, for instance, from my father's side, there are 19 siblings of my dad. From my mother's side, they are like eight. So you can imagine my rachatis and my aunties. And then you break that poverty. So I talk there from experience. But what I would like to, to advise from the young professionals, other things, as much as we are living in a rainbow nation, it's not easy to compare uh, us, when I say us, pe black people, because we're talking of blacks here yeah, or African to their white counterparts, because of different things. For instance, in family structure, there are four in their family, we are 10. So, but I, uh, having said that, I do not support the abuse that uh, young professionals 
feels from their parents. My advice to the young professionals is to be, be honest with your parents. Uh, do not fake it. You don't need to hire a car when you go back home. Just be honest, tell them, I am in the internship, I get 2.5, I am expected to pay rent and this and this. Why I say this, there is no parent really who wants to see a child suffering, especially being the parent being the reason for that suffering. There is no parent that wants that. But their expectation or their assumption that they think you have made it, they do not know how much you earn, they do not know your responsibilities, uh, like your transport and everything. And set rules. If you don't have money, don't don't assist. Uh, that, just say I don't have it, and just uh, don't, don't don't go beyond your means. Set rules to those people that no, I do not have it, man. Remember, it's you who tells them that you earn on the twenty-five, and then whenever they ask, they say I'm gonna give you on the twenty-five. I am getting bonus, all those things. Really, sometimes you really do not have to do those things, but also having uh, we view it as a black tax. But it also depends from family to family. For instance, in my own generation, all our parents are now AET. And really, we felt maybe, even us as the first people to work, that from what they were saying, from the shacks they are staying, I need to change, I need to buy them a bed. And then I appreciate. But now things are different. Your parents, which you are from 2000, are, my, are, my, are of my age, they are working. So uh, now, most of them, maybe they are working, but you need to be honest. That's what just I want to say. Be honest, and if you do not have it, say you do not have it. And because all of them, your parents do want us to succeed. And also, compare it, do not compare your family from your family because you know your own circumstances. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think it's Neo next. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I really, I really appreciate also the opportunity of being here with such great minds and with us then discussing um, such serious matters, especially given that, as I have already mentioned, the fact that when we move to the next generation, we really need to be the change that we currently want to see. But I can confidently say that with black tags, although it has so many negative things, I feel that we are actually moving forward as a nation in terms of when you when you when you consider the the first generation that lived just after democracy, I mean, just after apartheid, when we gained independence, then we were dealing with a generation that was not educated and a generation that did not have the means to 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 have um, proper homes, to to just have a, a a good lifestyle, such that when they take children to school and then the children come back and um, assist the families move forward, maybe by um, I like the example that Mama Zuki was was making, um, that you now you, you buy a bed now then you know that the next person buys a couch. We, we are gradually moving forward. And of course, I do not make this example or this, this point to then also undermine the fact that a uh, black tax can be, can be abused. I think the, the issue here in addressing the problems regarding black tax, we need to actually establish, maybe consider black tax as an umbrella term, but under black tax, what is there, given the different circumstances? Because if I come from a privileged family, of course, the kind of black tax that I deal with is not necessarily the same as someone who um, whose fees were paid by, by an uncle. There are things that, because you are a human being, if my grandmother pushes so hard, she wakes up every morning to make fake cooks and ensure that I go to school, I will not have it in me to be okay with having a lifestyle somewhere, wherever, when I've made it, when I know that there's people at home, and usually with black tax, the people who usually feel the need to go back and, and assist families are people who have benefited from black tax. If my uncle has contributed to me making it, and I see the children suffering, it's, it's actually human to actually go back and also ensure that we move forward. And of course, like I said, we do not undermine the fact that 
or disregard the fact that there are people who can abuse black tax. And of course, this is a problem that um, we face across all systems uh, with everything. And I, I like the fact we were also touching on, on Lobola. Uh, Lobola is a beautiful concept, but of course there are people who abuse the idea of Lobola. I have daughters, it means I'm going to be managed because my daughters are going to bring me money. That is a flawed idea of Lobola. But the Lobola itself, the system, it's not a problem because we understand that in the African context, we do it because it's a way of showing gratitude. So I think also um, with young people, we have a responsibility of ensuring that we run, we chase after the opportunities that are there and we bring them to our communities. And I like the fact that um, um, we also mentioned that it's not just about money. It's, it's, it's also about other things. But I think it's really important that as young people, we still have the energy. I'm in university right now. There's so many opportunities. What am I sharing with the people back at home so that they also um, benefit from me being in, in a certain space? And we, we usually call this thing, uh, I know, nepotism, and I know that it's problematic, but nepotism, when you're in a workspace and when there's an opportunity, you think of your people, it, it, it's okay. I feel things should be that way literally in all the opportunities that that you see as a person but before we we we, we sort of um backlash the the idea of black tax i think we need to just give it a chance we are moving forward because if you think about it with the example that i've made that after colonialism or um at independence that first group of course, they didn't have education. Of course, they couldn't do so many things. But the next generation was able to uplift others, moving them even from the rural areas to get them to the townships. To even now, we are at a point where uh, we are able to move our parents to 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 the suburbs and the likes. So I feel that although it has the small problem that it has, I don't think we should completely do away with black tax because I think that in itself will kill the spirit of Ubuntu. Especially given that we can't shy away from the fact that as young people. Right now, we are we are influenced by so many things, social media being one of them. I need to be seen that I've been to university. I need to be seen that I, I, I studied a relevant cause by the car that I drive, using the phone that I use, going to the places that I go to, associating with certain people. And already when we say to you that live your life, be your own person, uh, do not you don't necessarily have to consider, do give as you, I feel to a certain extent, we are already teaching people uh, that they do not have to give, which is a problem. In the African context, we, we teach you to give. We don't force you to give, ne? but we teach you we, want you, we want that foundation of giving to be in you such that by the time you need to give, you just give. Now, when we're going to have conversations around making it an option, it also compromises the kind of education that we then give to our young people. Because now you'll be there flourishing. We will see you on Instagram flourishing, but there's a problem at home. You yourself are also then going to deal with the same society that you are saying that um, it should not influence uh, the whole idea around black tax. They will be asking you, why is your mom living in a shack and you are driving, uh, driving a Mustang? That is a problem. So I think in, in addressing mm -hmm. the issue of black tax, we need to also work around the education that we then give to the coming generations. Let's not make it seem like it's such a terrible thing. Although we should not avoid the fact that people abuse it, but let's then distinguish um, the, the the different levels. I once listened to a speaker who spoke of how we all have flaws and ceilings in our lives. Your flaw is where you start and your ceiling is where you want to go to. My flaw, because I probably went to a certain school, is different from yours because you come from a different place. And where you want to reach is different from um, where I want to reach as a person. And it's okay to work around that. But in working around that, let's not necessarily um, throw a backlash maybe to someone who comes from the villages and feels that when I acquire my degree, when I start working, I, I want to get fulfillment from knowing that I have helped four more people. Then fulfillment from knowing that I managed to drive the car that I wanted. I managed to, to, to use the phone that I, and I managed to live in, a, in an area that I wanted to live in. But um, I think um, essentially, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. I think as a young person also going into the world, into the workspace, you want to go in there with all this, this knowledge and the fact that we, have, we do have elderly people um, amongst us addressing these things. And also, I love it when parents, um, and of course, I, I will say parents because I'm very young um, at this point, but when parents in, in this discussion speak of how you, you should not um, expect uh, the whole thing of 
young people are now working now they can't even get married because there's an obligation and of course it makes sense you want to get married there's 50,000 rents that is needed from you but you still need to build a home for your mom and and the likes so i like it when it comes from a parent who then says that naughty as parents let not let's not abuse the system of giving and of course the idea around um the idea around black tax and giving back we spoke of how the fundamental of this thing is gratitude and it's gratitude because you understand what has been done for you and you understand where you are going which then essentially says as a parent you actually do not have a right to expect or demand because it's gratitude when i want to say thank you to you it's up to me whether i will say thank you using one word or i'll say thank you and buy you a card or I'll say thank you by taking you out on on a lunch date but um essentially um thank you and congratulations once again to you masha we will definitely support and i i i, I i'm sure if the information is shared with us um I'm, I'm a student leader we will be able to then also share with other students and the support can be maximized but thank you everyone Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I saw a few hands other than mine. Uh, I don't know, is there anyone else who would like to use the few minutes that we have left? Uh, it's now uh, 21 minutes past two on my clock. Mm -hmm. I think we only have about eight minutes left. Uh, can we Please keep our comments and questions uh, very brief. Uh, I think it's Osma TD, so, uh, and then is there anyone else? Charo, do you also have a question? You may jump in after Osma TD, so thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Abuti. Uh, um, uh, Osma Shia, we really appreciate the hard work that you have uh, taken and the step that you have taken in writing this book. And uh, surely we are going to play some others and you can uh, expect um, a review from me, definitely. When we talk about black tax, um, I'm very, very pleased um, that all of us here, we got an opportunity to address it and from different perspective we got to see the positiveness of it and we get to hear the negativity of it but all in all we have learned thank you Ndate Pule, for raising that giving back it is essential it is very important for us to give him back but doing so we need to have a method on how we are placing it in order and thank you mary Philo, for highlighting that it is not only for us to flourish, but also to helping others around us. But we need to have a method on how we are helping out. Therefore, we are giving, but we are also helping out. We don't give so that necessarily they may have a flourishing life, but we give in order to help them to establish a life for themselves. And thank you, Osnewa. Can I hug you on a thumbs up? I, I, I can give you. Yes, you, you you touched on some of, of, of issues that I wanted to highlight. When you said um, uh, uh, giving back as young people, it does not have to enforce us to feel a pain of giving back. Because when we feel a pain of giving back, somewhere, somehow, it has a negativity on us. And we ended up failing ourselves. Therefore, we, we have to indicate when is it enough to give back? We have to be honest in ourselves in giving back. And all in totality, I would like to say to all of us, until we have resolved the issues that are concerned with black tax, majority of us will still, we are still going to battle with the issue. We need to identify these issues and we need to address them so that the generation that comes after us, they are not going to be burdened by it, but they are going to do it as a method of helping others so that we are going to get rid of this bondage of generational wealth. Thank you very much and may the God bless you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh... Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. Yes, you are. Okay. Can you hear you, Fazile? 
Uh, I am worried about time. Datimakas, uh, I apologize in advance. I just want to accommodate. Uh, I saw a gentleman who raised his hand here for quite a while, uh, Chwaro. Uh, just a, a minute or two quickly, and then we can give uh, uh, the proceedings back to Datimakas to close for us at half past. Uh, Chwaro, are you there? Let me refill you. I see you, man. Maybe just very, very briefly, Chwaro, and then Mary Filo thereafter. Oh, uh, he's no longer there. Uh, Mary Filo, I think you can just, within a minute, just wrap it up for us, please. Hey. Thank you so much, Ndate. Um, Thank you so much, Meshia, for 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 this book and for the organizers um i i just wanted to just um say in terms of giving giving back and uplifting others i think we need to discuss with the people that we are assisting as to what is it that we can do and we cannot do and also create boundaries you know to say, you know, I need, I'm assisting you. I need you to go through varsity. I need you to, you know, to complete your degree. But then um, I can do it up to a certain point. How much do you need? I'm going to give you 1,500 a month. Please make sure that the 1,500 covers a month for you, for the whole month for you, you understand? And also uh, push the idea. Okay, before I go there, I just want. I, 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 I just wish that um, Masha, um, maybe Marcus and the and the facilitator, can you organize something? Um, uh, uh, can, you, can you organize um, where uh, 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 um, a session where parents can talk about this the, this um, um, black text so that parents can say their expect expectations. Because we're talking and we don't understand because um, as parents, there's expectations that sometimes I feel like, no, this is not right. As somebody that is dealing with the youth, I always hear the youth saying, what the mama tell us, what do you think? You know, I don't understand it when my mom said I must do this and that and that and that. So if we can have a session and so that the, the parents can also say, what is it? What are my expectations in terms of black kids? So that we can, you know, we can address each other as parents without feeling as if the youngsters are, are disrespecting us or something. But then this is this this really needs to be to be ironed out. And also, finally, I just want to say, please, when it comes to to giving, really we must start giving in order for people to develop themselves. We cannot always have people that are sit sitting back, sleeping and waking up whenever and continue giving, continue giving. But you know, you know, that is not right. That is not right. We must give to them and tell them, you know what? I need you to wake up. I need you to do something. I need you. What is it that you like? What is it that you can do in order for you to, to feed yourself going forward? You see, so I, I'll, I'll just I'll just like to say, yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I sometimes feel, feel, feel sad for for some youth as I'm talking to them. But and I always say, if it makes you bitter, then there are no blessings. The blessings will be there if you are grateful, if you are happy, if you are cheerful and if when you see progress and you are happy about it. But once it makes you bitter, then there are no blessings. So please create the platform for us. I want to hear what other Magogos are saying and old men. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I hope that the uh, Marcus is listening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just want to read a comment from uh, uh, Choro who could not uh, stay online. Uh, he, and, and, uh, and it reads as follows, sorry. Uh, he says that uh, I enjoyed the conversations and we need such conversations and we must also unpack the dangers of black entitlement that would start as early as during varsity years where students are expected to assist with their NSFAS funding. 
Uh, that was uh, Charles' uh, comment. Unfortunately, he had to go. Uh, uh, I think this marks the end of our discussion. Uh, just before I give to that day, uh, Marcus, uh, I, I wish all of you a happy Africa Day. Hopefully you enjoy. Remember that uh, this day has been declared by the African Union uh, as, or rather this year's Africa Day has been declared by the African Union as, uh, uh, you know, uh, the year in which arts, culture, and heritage uh, levers are, are emphasized and uh, building the Africa we want. Uh, thank you very much, Ndati Marcus. I hope we uh, did the job as you requested us to do. Uh, and I'm assuming that all of us are available, even in future, to assist the uh, library information services to carry forward its mandate. Uh, especially those of us who are an alumni of the university, we are always willing uh, to build on the legacy of the university. And I know uh, from the student activist side, uh, they are the first to raise their hand and uh, volunteer their skills and expertise. To all our guests, including Marcia, thank you very much for attending. Murunwa, Neo, Osmutsidisi, all of you, I don't know who I'm forgetting, but thank you very much for volunteering your time. Uh, I now give back to Ntate uh, Marcus. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues. It has been an eye opener. Uh, when we talk of decolonizing education, this is what we're talking about. I think over the years, we, we're seeing uh, discussions uh, within a uh, universities taking place, but they never really have to touch what is happening in our societies. So as leaders within universities, I think this is one of uh, the strides that we try to push that our universities should begin to look like us. Because then uh, we, we know we, we, we see universities, but it's like they are there. They are not really addressing issues that are taking place uh, in, 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 in African communities. So this is one of the of the first installments uh, that will be to, we really appreciate uh, that um, will be will we'll be looking into it and ensuring that uh, we're recording all the suggestions and we begin to to move in that direction. But of importance, I think uh, you know universities are, are producing what I would call distressed graduates. You know you, you have you have you have this pro product that you're sending into community. But when they leave your shores, already they've got so much baggage, you know, and 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 they are likely not even to come back. One of the issues has always been why we don't have a, 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 a professors in, in 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 you know black professors because immediately they go into business because the idea is to accumulate as much as you can so that then you are able to deal with all issues that are at home. And, and, and the baggage is just too much. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy that young people that are here in Murungwa are, are really showing us, you know, that we, are, we, are, we can survive all these things. And, and of importance is that we should begin to research these things. Very important. We should begin to write about these things. So Mashia, you have done very well. Uh, I, I mean, I met you as a young, young, very young. I think you were 17 or 18. And, and, and you have done your first launch, this is your, your, your second launch. So it is, it is also my way of, of, of my black text to say that I will be on your neck until you rise. And, and, and I'll, I'll call for all of you who are here that when you've got activities in your spaces, invite Mashia, because she is my project, this is my duty. And, 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 and there are many others uh, that, that, that have started work with me uh, in the university, Bo Ace Muloi, Bo Matimela Sitenane, who is in Kwako, to make sure that these young people rise. Because we have a duty to, to produce our own celebrities who are who are able to, 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 to take us forward. Well, uh, we'll try to obviously, um, you know, create future platforms uh, so that then we're able to meet in this, in, in this manner and, and discuss issues that affect us. You know, Black Text, Obviously, there must be limits. Mary Filo is correct. There must be limits. So our researchers and writers 
look into all these things and say, but what are the limits? Because then you cannot go on and go on. And, and, and when Mashia is telling me that there's also a little nephew now added, I was say, you, you, the price of pampas, ah, I call, it's too much. You know, <laughs> it, 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 it's just, it is just difficult. But, but these are realities in our communities. These are realities that we are dealing with. So as a university, we are moving in that direction to say, let's deal with issues that affect the surrounding communities. A university cannot be an island where, you know, uh, our, our academics are actually writing and doing research so that they can they can compete with their with their colleagues uh, outside the, the country. They are always going on these research places in America, in Spain. But there are serious issues here, serious issues. Uh, 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 I was discussing with another colleague that, but then when we protest, for example, how do we protest? Because at the same time, you cannot have the same students that we are producing, blocking gates, making other people not go write tests. So somehow we need to begin to deal with issues that are, are surrounding us. So now you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are a leader, I know. So begin to, to discuss these things, to say, but how do we deal with issues that are really affecting us? Because on a particular day, uh, what now? Why does it keep on closing out? Thank you, Marcus. We can still hear. That Marcus, are you there? I think we've lost connection, colleagues. Let me just. Uh, Dr. Marcus, are you there? Just a second, colleagues. You may continue that, Marcus. You are muted. That, Marcus, I think your mic is muted. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, th thank you to technology for kicking me out. Uh, I could take my breath. Uh, so. Uh, of, of, of importance that I, I, I really wish to thank all of you and Dade Bule and Dade Fezile and Mary Filwe, a former librarian we used to work together and, and, and I'm glad that you're still holding the fort in Kualkwa. Masati, Neo, Mrungwa and my colleagues Nampita and, 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 and Tenji. We will make sure that this uh, recording is available because the idea is to create knowledge so that then if you want to share to share with, with, with your colleagues, if you want to refer to it at home and watch with your kids and so that it is available out there. So thank you very much for making this a beautiful day a success. And I am an African. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... We may all say thank you and our goodbyes, colleagues. I think this marks uh, the end of our session. Enjoy Africa Day. Thank you. Bye. Come see Bye bye. Come see Bye. 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 Thank you. Should I also go out?